Yo guys, it is Shades, welcome to this brand new video here on this channel. Today we're playing Frosty Nights. This game is created by Barry McCabe. Um, this is going to be, I guess, a little bit of a freaky game. Although there's a snowman outside. And this is our toy, this, those are our toys in the bathroom. Uh, this is literally exiting the game. I already tried it. The, you really go out of the game when you... Uh, walk into that room so we're not going to do that. let's go here oh, this is the menu my god the mystery door we got new game we get continue we got nightmare nights okay let's go with new game and i'm a boy let's check it out yes i checked it out it's a yeah i'm a boy it's a boy <laughs> <laughs> So we're going here into the game and uh, ease picking up things it says P ease picking up okay then what happened to the snowman do you want to build a snowman a one that's really tall come on place it on here we want to build this snowman by the way if you guys are hyped for Christmas for Easter anything in between there let me know by pushing up the like button i don't know when you guys are watching this i hope you're watching this as a christmas video that will be really really cool if you do watch this as a christmas video leave a comment down below i really want to know oh god it's all it they got the nose here the carrot come on pick up the carrot and we built the snowman there it is what do we do next we can pick up a lot of things what do we Oh, we got to create his arms, of course. Let's put the arms in there. Oh, my God. I really forgot about that. How can I forget about that? Okay, that's one arm. Let's get the other arm. Um, warm? It's not even warm. It's cool. There's snow outside. Jeez. Okay, let's put the other arm in there. One, two, three. Pew! Is it that? Is that everything? Yup, that's everything. Nicely done. A little applause. Okay, now it's... Oh, it's getting dark. It's getting really dark. Clockwork Wolf. Boom, 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 boom. Presents. You don't even see it. Oh, there it comes. <laughs> it was in black there. Boom, 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 boom. Christmas Eve. Boom, 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 boom. Christmas Day. Boom, boom, boom. Santa Claus. Frosty Nights. I gotta say, this game looks pretty awesome. You can see, like, they don't have a lot of budget, but this looks super good. Lightning, everything here. Look at the deer. Oh my god, there's green in the air. Wow, that's so nice. Nicely made. Okay, the light is on inside the house. Is that an owl? Yes, it's an owl. Oh my god. It's, I guess it's going to be a little bit creepy. We got this house, this wooden house in the middle of the forest. The lights are on. We're moving inside. We just built up this snowman. And let's see what we can do more. Let's see what we can do more in this small house. Okay, there we are again. Yeah, there's the snowman. Now it's dog outside. And Don't stay up too late, okay? You've got your first day at school tomorrow. And no listening to those horror stories anymore. You know they give you nightmares. Sweet dreams. Love you. Love you too, Mom. Good night. Close the door. Please. I can't sleep with the lights on. Please. Um, why, why, why does my mom always have to do this? Please close the door. I can't, oh, what? I think the door is broken. The bunny. Wait there. Aha, uh -huh, you got this flashlight. And there we go. Flashlight. Wait, there's a tape in there. Maybe we need to put the tape in somewhere. This, this is tape. Put it in here. Let's listen to Frosty the story. Frosty Nights, Chapter One. 
Welcome, children, to a wonderful, magical, and yet grisly story that old Saint Nicholas never wanted you to know. This story takes us back a long, long time ago. Old Nicholas still had flecks of ginger in his beard. We'll just call him by what everyone today know him as. Santa. Santa Claus. This guy here. We will start from the very beginning, when Santa was still scouring the world for the perfect place to build his workshop. He found none better than the North Pole, where magic seeped readily from the Earth. So much magic was there that Santa learned to use the magic in ways he had never dreamt. His body no longer grew old. He could slow time around him to a near complete stop, and as long as he gathered enough magic, he knew he could travel the world in what to us was a single day. Even slowing time as he could, Santa quickly realized to make enough toys for every child in the world would take him far too long. So Santa placed his hands into the snow and called to Mother Nature herself for help. Mother Nature was gentle, as she was wild. She saw the kindness in Santa's heart and agreed to help by melding Santa's magic and Mother Nature's spirit into the snow itself. The first of the snowmen bubbled up from the ground like liquid snow, yet unmoving and lifeless just as the snow know today. ...to pause before then placing a carrot for its nose. The requires a small part of life to begin with. The acorn for the oak tree, the egg for the red robin, and the love of a mother and father for humanity. The carrot twitched, and ever so slowly eyes within the sphere of snow began to appear and opened for the first time. Santa slanted his head to the side in a curious thinking gaze as he took off his scarf and hat and placed it upon the snowman. Taking a step back, he looked again and smiled. The snowman smiled back. As Santa the father and Mother Nature as the mother, the snowman were all too happy to help Santa build his workshop and all the toys for every child in the world. So, okay. Everybody was way too happy to help out the Santa Claus. What, what do we want with that story? Okay, the tape is over. I had my... St I hide my story, I guess? Story tapes around my room to stop my mom finding them. I'm not sleepy yet. I might find them and pray then in my... Wait, play them. Oh, play them. It's so hard to read. In my tape player. I won't have time to listen to them again. I have five tapes. This is picking things up and this is walking around. Okay, I got five tapes. Still the same time. Where are the other, where are the other tapes? Grab it. We found ourselves another tape, man. There we go. Okay, let's place the tape into the tape layer. Okay, let's go Chapter further on with the story. Two. Many years had passed, and children throughout the world had Christmas within their hearts. Santa had delivered toys year after year to the children of the world, and the world was a better place for it. However, there were children who were not happy with Santa's toys alone and demanded more and more. The parents of many of these children succumbed to their child's wishes and began to buy more and more as each year passed. Each year more and more trees were getting cut down, toy factories could not keep up with the demand and forests were not being replanted and regrown as Santa did with his magic. Mother Nature watched as the birds, squirrels, deer, bears, and countless more of her children were left homeless and died. Mother Nature once saw humanity as her children, 
But each year, as the destruction for toys carried on, she became more and more furious. Santa understood Mother Nature's anger and tried to make amends by creating the naughty list. Any child who was undeserving would not receive Santa's toys, and the spare magic from making those toys would be given to the forests of the planet to That's help That's where the naughty list come. comes from, okay. Mother Nature was happy for a time, until even this did not offset humanity's greed. Humans, now with great machines, powered from the fossils of her most ancient children, began to pollute the air, water, the earth. Forests vanished before her eyes, and entire species began to die. Mother Nature wept for many years, hoping humanity would hear her and stop the pain they were causing. Her cries were drowned out by the drills boring into the planet the saws biting into the trees, and the roaring of flames in engines. The pain turned to anger, and the anger to fury. Santa was helpless as Mother Nature's suffering began to warp the minds of the snowmen. One by one, they stopped working on toys, and slowly but surely faded into the distance as they left the workshop behind. Santa eventually found the elves high up in the mountains that were glad to be of help to Santa. However, our story is with the snowman, and not Santa. Okay, that was it. So, it seems like uh, Santa Claus had to make a lot of presents, I guess, for the children. But he was like, oh my god, Mother Nature, I can't do this on my own, please help me. Okay, so Mother Nature started to help him. But... What's going on is that a lot of children, they were greedy and they asked for too much. And their parents were like, okay, let's buy it. If my child wants this, then we're just going to buy it. And I've never been a person of buying too many presents for your child. Don't do that. Like, they're not getting, they're not being a better person if you do that. I can't put the flashlight on anymore. So Mother Nature couldn't handle it anymore. And uh, they were cutting down trees and all that. There we go. They were cutting down trees. And uh, that's pretty much where where the story is over, yeah, right now. But it's just the same tape, right? If, he, if we're going to play it again, I don't want to... I hope it's not the same one. Chapter 3. Chapter 3, okay. John had just gotten home from school. He quickly grew excited as he spotted the snowman outside his bedroom window. John's dad often made him surprises, and he quickly ran out to decorate the snowman. John used his favorite scarf and hat, and found the shiniest rocks he could for the buttons. John was very proud of his decorations, and soon it was time for him to go to bed. Looking out the window, he smiled at the snowman as his eyes slowly began to close. John awoke with a chill in the air and snow on his bed. He opened his eyes to see the window was wide open. Confused and sleepy, he got up and closed the window. As he looked out, however, he noticed the snowman's hat was missing. It must have blown off in the wind, he thought. I guess Upon so. Upon getting back into bed, he found the hat on top of his covers. He stopped and thought for a moment. His mom must have taken it off and put it there for him. After all, he no longer had a hat to wear for school tomorrow, and it was very cold outside in the mornings. The next day, John returned again from school, and a second snowman was right next to the first. He huh? couldn't believe it. His dad had built him a second. He went into the closet and found his box of old worn clothes, hats and scarves too tattered to wear, but sentimental enough to keep. John decorated the second, and again smiled with pride, as it almost seemed like the snowman smiled back at him. A trick of the imagination. And John thought how cool it would be if snowmen really were alive so it says like his dad did build 
the snowman for him. But I don't really think that's the case. <laughs> that's the whole creepy thing here. I, I don't think it's the case. There's something else going on, but we still don't know what. What can we do with the basket? Wait, I found a tape. I found ta tape number four. There we go. Further on with the story. <laughs> Chapter four. The sound of snow filled wind blowing through the room. The screech of an open window hinge as it bangs to and fro. John opens his eyes once again, tiredly shuffling out of bed to close his window. John freezes as his hand reaches for the latch. Only one of the two snowmen are outside his window. Why has someone moved it? John hears Such a, a dripping weird story. sound coming from his closet. John may only be a child, but he's never been scared of the dark or monsters. He's too clever to believe in fairy tales. So why would monsters be any more real than those? He heads over to the closet, and with a gentle pull, begins to open the door. Oh no, he... Think they want me to go into the closet now. What do we see? Oh, tape number five. Less tape. Oh my god, place it in there. What a beautiful location. Chapter 5. John's vision begins to adjust into the darkness from staring at the bright moonlight outside. Nothing. His closet is empty besides a few boxes. The dripping sound continues though, so he steps inside to try and listen to where it's coming from. As he does so, he hears a loud thud near his still open window. John pokes his head out of the closet. And there, in front of the window, is the snowman that only a minute ago was standing outside. The snowman is different, lifelike, with sharp, pointed teeth, and a hungry grin curling more and more to the sides as it starts to move closer. John is frozen in fear. He doesn't understand. There is no logical explanation. He slowly oh backs God. away further into the closet. He feels something wet on his head. Drip, drop, drip, drop. As John looks up, the missing snowman is on the ceiling, holding itself up with big branched arms. John sees the other snowman now in front of the closet, arms reaching. The closet door begins to close, and complete darkness envelops John. Oh no, Rough that's what we got to do next, of course. Fingers wrap around John's head, and a gruesome snap and popping sound echoes through the room from that dark closet. John is never seen again. The house is put up for sale shortly after. However, with the disappearance of John well known throughout the town, a young boy who suddenly vanished without a trace from his bed one frosty night, the house remained unsold and empty for many years. Until this night, in fact. Which, my child, is where our story begins. Oh, fuck. What's going on? That's the story. The snowman is coming. I have to prepare. We need to find something to score, something to scare the snowman with, something to see in the dark, so with a flashlight, something to bind both of them together, trying to swap between them would be dangerous. I should bring everything to the table. So. I think something needs to scare to the which table? Which which table? I guess this table here. Okay, we got everything right here. We get the flashlight. We have the tape. Everything bent together. And right now, we should be able to do the next thing. Before each night, you should search for useful things and put them where they will help 
Best defense position to stay at night is in the bed. Okay, this is the best position to be. Okay, it's slowly getting dark again. <laughs> night one. Oh, what is that? Oh my god, no, the window is opening up. Oh, it's a deer. It's the owl. They're in the tree. What do we have to do? I just gotta keep on using the phone. Oh! There he is, there he is, there he is. We got him, we got him, we got him, we got him. He's melting, he's melting. Yeah. I like that, okay. Oh no! Crap it! Oh my god. Let's close the door. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, the train is driving. Boop, boop. Okay, stop driving. How late is it? 422. There is a shadow moving. Ah, he's there. Nice, 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 nice now. We welted him. Oh, he's coming. Okay, was that our first night? Oh my god, the snow fell off the roof. That was already pretty scary, though. I think we don't really need to... Uh... There he is. Oh! Okay, we melted him again. Okay, it's getting low, almost 6 o'clock. Yeah, it's 6 o'clock. Okay, we made it through the first night. Wow, look at the snowman. <laughs> Why is he so damn creepy? Oh, he's freaking creeping me out, this guy here. He's really creeping me out. And then it goes to black again. <laughs> Oh wait, he's really climbing over the fence, right? He's just climbing over the fence. <coughs> I'm sorry. What is this? I should look for things that make noises and try to put them in places that will al alert me to where the snowman is coming from. Squeak like the teddy bear. I'll need to get back into the bed when I'm finished. Okay, this will be the next part. Um, I hope you guys have really liked this video. If you did, push up the like button and subscribe down below if you want to see more videos of me. There was cheese. I will check you guys tomorrow in a new video. Peace.